What's up, y'all? We are back with episode 19 of the Out of the Park Baseball 24 playthrough with the Minnesota Twins. We're here uh, mid-May in 2030. I'm going to keep doing that, I think. Um, and uh, the injuries have started to rack up for us. So um, first, let's get off to how we started because it was about as bad as you can uh, as you can get. So opening day was April 4th. So um, we wound up starting, what is this, 2 and 9 maybe? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 2 and 11. <laughs> so we started off the season 2 and 11. Uh, and I was like, oh, there's no freaking way. <laughs> like, we're going to collapse this bad. And then we wound up stringing off 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 in a row. And then, like, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 of 16. Um, and we sit at 25 and 14. So uh, we've been on a pretty good run since that abysmal start. Um, a couple of injuries to report. Byron Buxton went down maybe two weeks ago. Um, yeah, so two weeks ago. Um, and he's we're still waiting for him to return. Um, you know, he's a free agent for the year. I wanted to keep him as a twin for life. But, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't know if I can afford to throw up another 20 mil to sit on my bench for uh, a third of the year. But um, Carson Demartini went down. He has not had a single injury since I called him up. He's been the Iron Man in the middle of my order. Uh, fractured his hand, though, out five weeks. Uh, not horrible. Like, we can make our way through it, but um, that pushes, you know, Chase Davis and uh, Tommy White into everyday roles at first base. We finally called up Jesus Montez, who I've been waiting to call up, but I haven't had the chance because we've never, we didn't have any injuries that made sense to call him up. So he's up with the team and uh, Correa is back. He's playing. Um, Pena is still on the team. He's survived, you know, every crunch, even though he's been pretty bad. I'm sure, you know, let him hang out up on the roster. Um, then pitching wise, I guess we can go by. Let's just go through the rotation. So Nola started off really rough, as did most of my pitchers. Uh, but it's turned it around, so um, I guess we can go through his game log. You know, um, let's see, we started here. Opening day was a uh, good start on opening day. A couple of really rough ones in a row. To balloon his ERA to almost eight, and then, you know, he's been Aaron Nola since, so not concerned about him. Mike Wolf's been amazing uh, all season. Uh, 50 innings and eight starts, so what is that? That's um, six and a half innings to start, which is pretty good. Um Ben mondi has been a big surprise, you know, finally getting a start um, after being in the bullpen last year, and he's been really good. Um, Song has been better than I think that ERA indicates. I think he had a really, like, couple couple horrible starts to begin the year. Um, yeah, so he gave seven runs in two and two-thirds and six runs in three innings. Uh, besides that, he's been, you know, really, really solid for us, so... Um, Maybe not worth $6 million, but uh, he's been fine. Zach Cowers came back and made three starts. Two of them have been good. One of them has been bad, so mixed bag there. Um, and then our big uh, free agent signing, Andres Munoz. I knew this was going to freaking happen. I, I just had this weird feeling. He was fragile, and, you know, I should have saw it coming, but uh, he pitched six games for me and then went down with a shoulder, um, torn labrum in his shoulder. He's out for the year, so. That's $15 million down the shitter. Um, so Noah Dean takes over the closer's role. And then, you know, Leandro and Chase Petty will back him up, um, try to get to that ninth. Um, we called up a couple of guys. Uh, Jose Pena Jr. has been up for a couple of games and been really good. Um, this guy, Luis Baldry, I guess he made the team. Um, but he's been up pitching pretty minimally. Uh, but Carson Coleman and John Lash have been incredible for me in middle relief. Um, John Lash is like, I knew he was going to be a stud, but like, holy crap. Like, he's pitched 22 and two-thirds. I'm paced to throw about 100 innings for me um, and pretty outstanding. Uh, I would move into the rotation, but I don't know. I don't want to mess up his mojo in there. Um, also, I guess Luis Carrasco has also not given up a run. So, you know, our middle relief has been rock solid. Uh, although his peripherals aren't quite as good, but, um, you know, he's a pitch-to-contact guy. So um, Elvis Novus had a good, really good start. Novas had a really good start to the year. 
he went down with elbow inflammation, um, but he'll be back at some point uh, in the near future, and then all these were kind of pre-existing. Luis Joseph should be back in eight to nine weeks, and uh, Christopher Gonzalez in six. So that should help out the bullpen. Um, but, you know, the, the hitting's taken a bit of a step back. The pitching's been good, um, especially lately. So, um, yeah, uh, we'll keep moving ahead and I'll update you guys in a little bit. All right, checking in mid-June. And uh wanted to check in here because this is probably the worst lineup we put out at any point in this series. So, um, you know, the top three doesn't look too bad. You've got Mercedes, Palencia, and Mitchell. Um but then we have Lamar King, who has had a good season. Like, uh, okay, maybe not really, but no, he's been fine. Uh, he's my cleanup hitter right now. And then got like Carlos Correa, who's not hitting. He's batting fifth. Tommy White, you know, he's he's been good this year. Once again, uh, he's sixth. And then we have Jesus Montez, who uh, you know he's still figuring it out, but he's he's my seven hitter. And then Cody Schreier and Earl Vera uh, round up the order. So. And our, our bench, we're carrying three catchers right now just because they're the best guys that I have in the minors <laughs> who could actually hit. Um, Hoffman Vickerly, who's been good since he's come up. Um, then we have Chase Davis, who just recently recalled, uh, who w- w- wasn't really able to hit at the major league level at all this season. And uh, Steve Driver, who was struggling in AAA, but uh, he was the only other outfielder on my 40-man roster, so... Um, that is because Emmanuel Rodriguez is out four or five weeks. Uh, Buxton's out for two weeks. Again, another injury. Um, and then Demartini's still out, and um, yeah, that's about it. But I mean, overall, we're still you know we're still competing thirty six and twenty five. Uh, Palencia has had an awesome season. Mercedes has been good, if not uh, but not great. Um, also, his outfield range has dropped a bit, so I don't know if he's really a center fielder anymore. Uh, that's a different story. Uh, Dirk Mitchell's been solid. Uh, we've really had Palencia and then a bunch of like dudes who have been pretty solid. Um, but uh, sad news on Zach Cower. Um, his ratings have really dropped after the shoulder inflammation he dealt with at the end of last year. And uh, he's been off to a pretty bad start in eight games, so... Uh, he might get bumped to the pen at some point. Maybe John Lash goes in the rotation. I don't really know at this point. Um, this team is turning into a mess. So, <laughs> um, but somehow we're still we're still good, and uh, we're in first place. So, uh, we're gonna keep chugging along here. All right, it's about three days later, and um, Demartini just had a freaking uh, setback from his injury. Now he's gonna be out for two to three months. So, a five week injury turns into like a whatever that is, eight-week injury, 10-week, 12-week injury. Um, so that's a huge setback for us. Um, that puts his return in, like, the like the August, like, August-September um, area. So um, just a huge, huge blow to our team. Um, I, I don't know if we can recover from it because, like, you see this lineup without him, it's not – very impressive. <laughs> so uh, we'll keep chugging along, but that's um, really bad news for us. All right, so catastrophe is struck once again. Derek Mitchell, the next outfielder go, to go down with, for eight weeks uh, with an oblique strain. So that's going to leave us without Rodriguez and Mitchell for four more weeks, both of them. Um, Demartini for two to three months and Buxton for another week, but we all know how that goes. So um, now we have uh, Cody Schreier starting in left field, and um, let's see, uh, what was the, I don't know, our bench is a freaking shit show. We <laughs> have Luis Ravello back in the infield, who's not a bad player, and Steve Driver, who's also not a bad player, backing up the outfield. Um, ben Hoffman is dh against lefties. Uh, then we have Chase Davis dh against righties. Um so yeah, it it is what it is. So we'll we'll keep moving along, and you know, maybe some of these guys come back and uh, can stay healthy. Okay, so we are at the All Star break, and let's really quick go through uh, which of our guys made the game. So uh, Ben Gismondi, who's had an excellent year, he um, is one of the starting pitchers. Mike Wolf actually gets the start. You know, been incredible for us. Um, don't know where we'd be without him this season. Twenty three years old. Hopefully, uh, many a good season ahead. Uh, Carson Coleman, who has been sensational out of the pen, 
makes it as a reliever. Um, and John Lash, in his rookie year, makes it as well. Uh, I think that's all the pitchers. Uh, yes, it is. So, uh, as for batters, you know, Palencia makes it, of course. Um, he's been, um, I don't know where he'd be without him in our lineup. So, he's had an awesome year. Um, let's see, anyone else? Looks like that is our only hitter, which is, you know, for, not surprising, but pretty crazy. Um, Noah Franco having an insane insane season <laughs> holy crap oh my god a 12 or a 1.2 ops and you know on pace for one of the best seasons ever uh from a pitcher or from a hitter and also pitching a little bit uh, but he's hurt that sucks um but quick update um we did go through the first year player draft so we can kind of go through the first couple of picks and show what we did so our first pick we took this guy danny bruin um he kind of fits the mold of a lot of the guys we've been taking recently, you know, like these high movement, high control guys with low stuff. Um, I think our, our catching defense is good enough to boost this stuff um, up a little bit when they do reach the majors. It's just about getting there at this point. Um, but a fastball slider, sinker cutter, you know, three variations of the fastball I don't love, but at least he has a slider and it's a good pitch for him. So hopefully he can get some strikeouts when he does get up here. Um, and then our second round, or our supplemental first round pick, I think this was, um, uh, this could have been for a couple different guys, but it's one of our, one of our sub picks. We got um, another college arm, same kind of build, you know, high movement, high control, okay stuff. Uh, sinker, splitter, slider arm. So I think that was a pretty good pick. And then another pick we had in the first round for our other supplemental pick was this guy, Mark, Mike Carson. 75 infield range, um, can also play a really good outfield. Uh, and the bat's not horrible, so um, they project him as a regular starter, so I, I like that for a, uh, you know, of basically a, a first-round pick. So uh, then we took a high school bat, Skyler Kip, with our second round, 72nd overall. And uh, I, like this, I like this upside, but, you know, he's got a long way to go, so probably won't see him for a couple of years. Uh, I threw this guy, Rady Martin. I like the the pitch mix of the fastball sinker and knuckle curve. Uh, he is a side armor, and we've had a tough time with these guys um, once they've gotten up. I think that's one of the reasons that Song has been so bad for us because um, he is a sidearm pitcher. Because I was looking at it in uh, our scouting report, and he said, you know, sidearm delivery introduces some moderate platoon issues. Um, I haven't looked. Um, he's actually better against lefties, which is pretty crazy. I wonder if, if he's like that throughout his career, but um, whatever. It's not a, I don't know what I'm going to do with Song because he's, he's been fine, but like I don't know if I trust him. Like He should be a better pitcher than what his uh, ERA shows him to be, but I don't know. We've waited so many years for this guy to come around, and I, I think I'm ready to move on. Uh, and Estrada, you know, he's been good, uh, much better you know, since I called him back up, so... Um, so yeah, there's the pitching and then I, I think it's pretty much everyone like interesting. I kind of took a bunch of flyers with like some high school guys. Uh, this guy's actually an interesting player. So Tim Potter, our fourth round pick, you know, long way to go, but pretty developed for a 18 year old, you know, all of his ratings over 25 at this point and, uh, his contact and avoid Kayser at 30. So I think he could actually, you know, if he develops right, I think he could have a fast track to the majors. Um, this is another actually interesting hitter. They wanted me to take this guy since, like, the second round, my scout, when I was asking. And uh, I eventually wound up taking him. And, you know, I think this might be a steal. You know, he can't really play the field. Like, he might be um, – he can't even play first, really. He's 6'5", 195. So, a lot of growing to do. But, you know, if he grows into this bat, then he could be a real impact player for us. Um, I guess this guy's interesting, too. Uh, I'm not even going to try to say that until he makes the majors. He's uh, a – high like high floor guy i think so whatever we'll stop there um and probably swim to the trade deadline i do have one trade i want to show um i don't even know where the heck this would be i think he was on the red Sox. yeah so i was just gonna flip song you know who i don't know i i think i'm ready to give up on him at this point for brady singer who's a free agent after the year the red Sox are already retaining all of his salary um 
you know, he, he's not striking out a lot of guys, but I think that has to do with him starting Henry Davis, who has a really low catcher ability. And I think if we brought him in and, you know, have, have our catchers kind of play him play with him, um, the extreme ground ball and, you know, pretty good slider, good sinker, change up. You know, his results are good too, so I think he could be way better with us, you know, with our defense and with our, uh, with our catchers. So uh, I think I'm going to pull the trigger on this. I'm kind of done with the song experiment at this point. I'm just tired of watching him trot out there and, and suck. So, uh, yeah, I mean, he's pitched about we, – we, we've given him plenty of opportunities. Like, it's not like we haven't tried him. Like, it's been five seasons now, and, you know, he's been at best a league average pitcher, but not even that in any season, uh, according to ERA. Um, and, I mean, his FIP hasn't been that impressive either. So, I do like his strikeout-to-walk ratio, but – I don't know. I, I'm just I'm I'm kind of done with him. So, um, you know, our fans might be pissed about this one, but I wonder if they're starting Brooks Brandon. Okay, they are. So yeah, Henry Davis and Brooks Brandon have been their main catchers, um, and you know neither of them really great defensively. This guy. Okay, I didn't realize they actually had him starting. So maybe maybe my theory is completely wrong. I don't know, um, but I do like Brady Singer. You know, high movement, high control, medium stuff. These are the kind of guys I kind of like to target. Um, I'm actually going to pull the trigger on this trade because I can't look at Song in my rotation anymore. It's just such a disappointment <laughs> since we signed him. So I'm going to toss Brady Singer in. Um, Zach Power is officially moved to the pen. Uh, he's only pitched one game, but, you know, he was good in relief. So uh, maybe, you know, maybe his stuff ticks up again and he becomes that guy he was. But um, I think that that shoulder injury really, really like derailed his career here. So really unfortunate. I'm I'm really sad to see it, but you know that's why you don't give out extensions to these guys because you know one injury and they're they're screwed. Like Mike Wolf, I would love to lock up. Um, I wonder what he would want in like a like a seven year deal. Yeah, okay, that's pretty ridiculous. So I'll ride it out with him. Same with Jismondi. Same with Estrada. Although I have had him for a couple of years and then. You know, Nola's still under contract and everything. So, I think our pitching's fine. I mean, you know, John Lash is here, too, who I, I want to, you know, at least try out in the starting rotation, even though his stamina is not really what I want from my uh, from my starters. But, um, yeah, we'll uh, some head to the deadline and get back to you guys. All right, so we're at the deadline, and I guess this will wrap up the episode. Uh, Logan Webb will slot into our four spot in the rotation, and I this looks – a lot more, you know, reasonable uh, for a playoff rotation. Estrada's still down in the minors. Um, I'll call him up eventually, but um, no rush on that, really. And, yeah, I, I think uh, as our hitting gets a little healthier, you know, Buxton went down with another injury. It is what it is. Whatever. Um, he won't – oh, now he'll negotiate again. Okay, so, I don't know. Maybe we'll give him a, an extension. I'm not really sure at this point, but I'd like to keep him around for the rest of his career, but – I mean, he's going to play about 50 games for me this year, maybe, best case. So, um, you know, he's not really the hitter he used to be either. So, um, yeah, well, we'll keep that in mind. But uh, Derek Mitchell will be back in a week. Martini will be back in about a month. And after that happens, you know, the lineups already starting to come into, come into place a little bit. So we called up Justin Best, um, who was our first-round pick in 2023. Uh, one of our first draft picks, maybe our second one. And, um, yeah, he's, uh, you he hit well in AAA. So I, I decided to call him up. You know, we, we had an outfield spot opened up, so I gave him a shot. Jack Rucker also up. He was a first round pick in 2028. So a lot of our draft picks getting up here this year. Um, Steve driver is also still up. Uh, he's been awesome out there and, uh, plays a good outfield too. So, um, he was the seventh round pick in 2026 uh, Montez still up and hitting okay. Uh, he's been pretty good. You know, he's probably not ready to be up here full time, but uh, he's been good. Uh, Roll Vera has been an absolute surprise. I, I kept him on the roster all of last year, even though he's bad. Um, just because I knew this year was coming, we're gonna have infield. You know, we're gonna we're gonna have the depth in the infield we used to have. So I kept him around, and looks like that's paying dividends because. He has been awesome. His walk rate's at 12%, strikeout rate under 20, well under 20, and uh, WRC plus of 121. He's playing third base every day for me. Um, other guys like Tommy White, he's been crushing it. Uh, way better against left. No, that's actually not true anymore. 
he was way better against lefties at one point, but, uh, you know, he's tapered off a bit, but he's been huge for us this, in the first half, and, you know, Palencia's still still killing it. Uh, Schreier's been good, um, you know, playing all over the field. I've had him, you know, wherever I need him to fill in. I think he's playing some center field right now. Um, yeah, against the lefties. I don't think he's gotten out there, but, uh, you know, Correa's taking a step back with the bat. Uh, not surprising. I mean, he's 35 years old. But still uh, a good defender at short, so we'll, we'll definitely take that. Uh, Mano Rodriguez is back, and he's been hitting well. Mercedes, you know, not quite the year he's had in the past couple, but still solid. And um, let's see, Ben Hoffman, I guess we can talk about him. Uh, he was ripping the cover off the ball. I've had him playing, you know, a little bit of DH, a little bit of first base, some catcher. Uh, but now he's just my backup catcher, Lamar King, who uh, has been really good. And, you know, he's a good defender. Uh, his ability is up to 65. Love to see that. Um, I think I hit on just about everyone here. And then, you know, the pitching, Noah Dean's been killing it. Leandro hasn't been great, but uh, I think the home run numbers will come down in a, in a, with time. Uh, Chase Petty, you know, Mr. Consistent, keeps going. Uh, then Carrasco, Novus, um, Coleman, and Lash have all been really good in middle relief. Cower has been good out of the pen. Hasn't given up a run in, what is that, six innings um, since he's been called in there. So there we go. We'll wrap up episode, ugh, I don't know what number it is, but uh, thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye.